All right, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, the public hearing before the Surrey County Board of Appeals is hereby called to order at 6 p.m. in the Surrey County Courthouse in Hayward, Wisconsin. Present on behalf of the board, Al Gerber, Steve Kelsey, Gordy Christians, Dee Dobliss, and Jim Tiffany. From the zoning office, Pat Brown and Kathy Marks. Those persons desiring to give testimony, will, pertinent testimony, will be afforded the opportunity to do so. As recognized by the chairman, that person shall clearly state their full name before giving testimony. <clears throat> Each hearing will follow this order, reading of the application, submission of the file to the board, applicant statement and presentation of evidence, testimony of those in support of the application, statements from person in objection to the application, rebuttal as permitted by the board and decision by the board. Orderly procedure requires that each side shall proceed without interruption by the other. All testimony will be addressed to the board and there will be no questions or arguments between individuals. Any persons agreed by a decision, the board may appeal the decision to the circuit court within 30 days of the date following the board's decision letter. The day following the signing of the board's decision letter is the first day of the 30 day appeal filing period. This public hearing has been published as a class two note notice in accordance with Wisconsin statute 985 and Sawyer County record and the Sawyer County Gazette. The public hearing will follow this order Various applications, new business and adjournment. Today's date is June 21, 2022. Are we ready to hear the first uh, case? Uh, we just need to approve the uh, April 26th. Okay. Minutes. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the April 26th meeting? Mr. Kelsey? I'll second. And D. Dobliss, all those in favor of the motion, six of saying aye. Aye. Motion passes by a vote of five to zero. This evening we have two variance applications. Uh, first one being a public hearing in the town of Edgewater variance 20-002, owners Craig Longacre, Lisa Longacre, Woodland Park, Lot 6, Section 19, Town 37 North, Range 09 West, Parcel 008-1920-0600.268 acres, zone residential recreational one, RR1. Application for the construction of a 24 by 24, uh, 26 by 25 with eaves attached garage to a five foot by 24 portion of a attached foyer onto an existing, existing permitted primary dwelling. The purpose of the attached garage and portion for the foyer area is needing the variance approval. The attached garage would be 34 feet at the closest point of the center line of Maple Terrace, a town road, and 24 feet to the closest point of the road right away. It should be noted that the traveled width of this is only 20 feet and is not located in the middle of the platted road right away. Variances requested is section 4.21, parent three, setback requirements of highways and roads, Sawyer County Zoning Ordinance, when required the prior granting of variance for any structure located closer than 63 feet to the center line of a town road or 30 feet from the right of way, whichever is greater. Um, as Jay's staff report, uh, the applicant, Craig Robert Longacre, 16854 W Maple Terrace Drive, Birchwood, Wisconsin. Property location is previously read into record. And again, the summary request is for that 24 by 24, uh, 26 by 25 with eaves attached garage and the five by 24 portion of the attached foyer to the primary dwelling. It is for a reduced road setback of uh, 34 feet at the closest point to the center line of the tra center traveled of Maple Terrace. Um, a town road and 24 feet at the closest point of the right of way. Uh, project history, if you would see the attached inspection report that was completed by Jay Kozlowski and 331.22, Jay measured out the setback distance and verified the measurements. The house has been constructed and was permitted under a reduced average setback allowance from the Lakeshore setback. The variance that is now being requested is very similar to the 2019 variance that was denied. The things to keep in mind and the things that differ between 2019 and present are as follows. The house has now been constructed and an extensive amount of water diversion infiltration basins have been designed on the property as slow water movement down the hillside and has also been engineered and designed to be a treated impervious surface amount subject to Sarah County Zoning Shoreline Wetland Protection Ordinance Section 9.5. 
that the engineer and WBE designed the infiltration basin to specifically treat 750, 765 square feet of roof surface area. When these provisions are met with the standards found in section 9.5, the area is then excluded from the impervious surface calculation. With the proposed foyer and garage area included the new house, but excluding the treated area and impervious surface totals would be approximately 14.7%. In 2019, it was somewhat unclear what the true center line no, oh, and the second point, this is the second point in Jay's staff point. In 2019, it was somewhat unclear that the true center line of Maple Terrace Drive was. The platted road width of Maple Terrace Drive, MTD, is a 32 foot wide right away. However, the center line of the traveled or area where the blacktop is placed is not the true center and is six feet closer to the applicant's property. Per the ordinance, requirement setbacks are measured to the center line of the road, but does not make the distinction between traveled center line or platted center line. For safety concerns and matters, the zoning department often uses the center line of the traveled for these setback purposes, but in this case does not lay cause to site limitations. There are also several other structures along this stretch of MTD that are closer than the requested 34 feet to the center line of travel. It was further described by the engineer that the applicant uh, and the applicant that in order to maintain site stability and properly functioning water diversion system that the proposed foyer garage should be attached to the main dwelling otherwise there may be an undermining in the back of the house and loss of water onto the uh, adjacent onto the adjacent property. The applicant has described this more in detail within their submitted comments. <coughs> Excuse me. This application was approved by the town board of Edgewater. A motion by Pete to approve the variance application for Craig and Lisa Longacre for the construction of a 24 by 24 attached garage and a five foot by 24 attached foyer and the setback requirements second by Scott carried there were seven there were seven opinion letters sent for return zero objections four non-objections i have no objections to this jordan sedevi i have no objections to this craig and lisa longacre have been long-term residents of maple terrace drive therefore understanding traffic and neighbors best intent to avoid any negative impact and adjoining property conditions that uh, conditions and traffic safety concerns. They have done extensive remedial water erosion control and studied the setback and studied the setback impacts. Good enough. It's well deserved. James T. James P. Del Medico. I have no objection to this. If it keeps Bob and Lisa from parking in the street in the winter, he has my permission to build two garages, LOL. <laughs> Daniel uh, Totten. I have no objection, says. It would be nice to see the house completed. It's a very beautiful home. I have no objections. They did a beautiful job of containing the water to their property. Please let them finish their home. Wilbur Chevy. That is all I have. <clears throat> okay. Um, before I ask for testimony um could you go back pat to that statement or calculation about um this water basin um definition and why um that 765 square feet of roof does no longer count as a previous surface that is for the existing uh, that's for the existing home out there the engineer Correct. So we have the, the engineered plan here. And what the applicants have ended up doing is hiring um, Heather Harrington and the NWBE. Um, oh, yep, there's a. And, and what, they, what they have done is taken all the stormwater and allowed it to come into a infiltration basin that by calculation only needed to 
treat 423 cubic feet of water and it treats the basin treats 457 square feet all the storm water from the site is being captured on site and is not um, allowed to overtop the basin and then um, percolates back into the, the groundwater. So then none of that is calculated as impervious surface? That is correct. Okay. But well, any new addition? Um, well, I said the applicants are supposed to. Um, uh, that that would be that would be also with the calculate that basin was set up for calculation of the garage and foyer oh, as well. So it was okay. oh, it, at the time that they built the house, they over engineered it. I see um, because of the area that the 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 area that they had ability had available to them under existing decks. So. Okay, are the long anchors here or someone to speak on their behalf? Please step to the microphone and state your name. Greg Robert Longacre, uh, my wife Lisa. <clears throat> I'd like to thank the board for taking time to hear our case. Uh, a little bit of history on the property is that my grandparents brought the property cabin in 1954. Uh, we're now in our fifth generation of family to visit the area. Uh, Lisa and I are now full-time residents uh, up here. It became apparent in the 90s that due to the cabin being built in the 20s uh, and being on a steep hill, uh, time had taken its toll on the cabin uh, due to sporadic and seasonal use. <clears throat> the crawl space began showing signs of downhill settlement. Uh, this got worse over the years. In around 2010, the septic uh, quit working due to settlement of the cabin and uh, the well uh, quit having water. <laughs> it went dry. Uh, radon tests in the crawl space uh, indicate a level of 14. Uh, it was decided in 2019 that due to the deterioration of utilities, uh, the lack of use by other family members, uh, the cost of repair replaced uh, the foundation, uh, well replacement, a septic, uh, basically it would become uninhabitable. It was time to remove it rather than want it to deteriorate more. Due to losing my parents, uh, this is probably the worst day of my life, was removal of this cabin. Uh, the memories can never be taken away and will always remain with my family. As caretaker, I promised my parents and the property would remain in the family. Uh, working with Jay in the latter part of 2019 and early 2020, uh, due to being a narrow lot, uh, there was limited area to build within the required setbacks. Um, you know, a modest home, 1,400 square foot was, was built with one bedroom above grade uh, due to the steepness in a lot and not wanting to build uh, any of the basement on fill. Uh, the foundation was designed with a 12 foot high rear wall on the, on the road side of the house um, and stepping down from there going downhill. The floor level of the house is uh, roughly eight feet below the road surface, road LA elevation. Uh, and there's, as uh, Pat had mentioned, there's a 70 foot setback from the center of the road. Uh, it's a very difficult house to build uh, because of the steepness of the lot, uncertainty of lumber prices, availability of materials, along with everything else affected by COVID. Um, again, due to the steepness and narrowness of the lot, we had very few options where we could possibly build a garage in the property. Uh, exhibit one on what we had submitted is a photo of our neighbor to the east, which has an elevated garage uh, with a basement under it. Uh, the, the basement floor is approximately of the garage. The basement floor of the garage is approximately four foot below the, the, the floor of our house. Uh, recently, due to erosion and being built on a hill, the cinder block foundation of the basement floor under the garage uh, had to be removed and replaced. Uh, very complicated. Also, cinder block uh, from the crawl space in the cabin on the lake below it had to be removed and replaced due to settlement. Uh, exhibit two in our package is uh, a picture of the neighbor's garage to the west, which also indicates that uh, detached structures built on a hill have a tendency to gravitate downhill. Um, <clears throat> on the west side of our property is our well uh, LP tank and our septic holding tank. So the only feasible place to uh, be able to put a garage would be in the center of the lot, like our house. Uh, we also, both side yards are vital to our stormwater management uh, design. 
uh, exhibits three and four in our, in our package we submitted is email correspondence from both our adjoining neighbors confirming that both are pleased with our containment of stormwater runoff to our property. Uh, we're happy that the adjoining neighbors are happy uh, with our efforts. <clears throat> uh, with a garage step back of 24 feet, the architect recommends no more than a two foot drop um, into a, a, if a garage was allowed uh, to accommodate water runoff and allow garage access during the winter months. With the house floor elevation being as high in the air as it could be, uh, and the garage floor being as low as it can, there remains a difference between the two elevations. Uh, exhibit five is a proposed um, foyer mud um, area, which would serve as a transition for the difference in these elevations from the garage um, to the house. Uh, would it be in a distance of 12 feet from the house to the garage, there would be nine stairs within that area to accommodate the elevation change. Um, please keep in mind that of the 12 foot of the foyer, um, you know, as Pat had mentioned, seven foot of the foyer is outside the 63 feet from the center line of the road and the remaining five feet and the 24 by 24 garage um, that we're asking for is what, are we is it what we're requesting a variance for. If a variance is not granted for part of the foyer, um, there'd be very serious concerns regarding the area between the house and the detached garage. Stormwater manager would be extremely difficult to control. Um, erosion would also be of concern, possibly undermining the foundation of the house as well as uh, the foundation of the garage. Uh, frost protection is also of concern. Also, during the last two winters, uh, only having the house there, there was a significant amount of uh, drifting snow on the roadside of the house. And, you know, if, the, if a detached garage were uh, uh, the way we had to go, uh, there would be outside stairs during the winter months, which would be a concern, could be a concern. Our current parking area is not usable for winter months uh, due to the steepness. Uh, during the winter, we park on the road. Um, as Pat had mentioned, it's a 20-foot wide, wide platted road, um, blacktop, and then 12 foot of um, drainage and utility easement. Um, so parking on the road creates a bit of a hazard for passing vehicles, uh, especially oversized, such as emergency vehicles, garbage trucks, propane trucks, et cetera. Um, exhibit six in our package is a map of Maple Terrace Drive. Highlighted in yellow is a parcel across the road from us that was recently purchased by a neighbor. There's a recorded document with that deed that indicates that the property can never be improved or changed from its current wooded use, um, as far as anybody building you know, in that stretch where we are. Highlighted in orange are numerous properties along the road that have structures within 63 feet of the center line of the blacktop. I believe there's 12 properties, uh, 12 structures. Um, exhibits seven through 12 are pictures of these structures and the distance back from the uh, edge of the blacktop to the eave. Uh, please notice the last, the last parcel on the map, uh, 16730 uh, Maple Terrace Drive was granted a variance in 2003 for a house and garage when it was built new. And they, like us, are dealing with a narrow 20 foot roadway and a steep lot. As for stormwater management, we feel we've been, um, have been and will continue to be good stewards of the land. Prior to building the house, we hired uh, Heather Harrington, um, who's present in uh, with Northern Wisconsin based engineers to design our stormwater management program. During construction, extensive efforts were put into erosion control using uh, curb logging, silt fencing, straw bales, numerous locations, as well as a row of straw bales at the top of the bank, um, which never really had gotten any use because as we mentioned before, nothing leaves the detention pond. It all percolates down. Uh, exhibits 13 through 17 in our package are photos of uh, post-construction drainage techniques uh, recommended by Heather. Uh, we installed multiple rock riffles, rain gardens, uh, heavy seeding of native plants, grasses, wildflowers, and then covered with erosion blankets. Uh, we've got some great plants coming in right now, deep rooted. Um, uh, they're all native to the area. Uh, we got some great information from Sawyer County pamphlet, which was helpful. Uh, there was and continues to be very little sedimentation or erosion. Um, and then all the rainwater from the side runs to the center of the side yards, then down through the rain gardens and rock riffles and end up in the detention pond located under lower deck. 
There's two four by four by six foot deep holes that were dug at the bottom of the, pond, of the detention pond, uh, lined with permeable fabric, filled with three inch rock, and then covered uh, with the fabric. And all, work, all water percolates down through there. Um, the temp detention pond was designed to accommodate 77 cubic feet of water storage. And as built by Heather indicates, we were able to build a storage capacity of 457 cubic feet, which is almost six times larger. And we were able to do this with the area that was under the, under the original decks coming back. Um, no fill was put in forward. It was all done on existing ground. Uh, we've all watched our shorelines deteriorate over the years due to uncontrolled water runoff and increased boat traffic. You know, in closing, you know, not to complicate things, uh, Pat did touch on it with Jay. In 1978, Town of Edgewater secured a 12-foot strip of land across the road, the entire length of uh, Maple Terrace Drive, all in Sawyer County for drainage and utilities, um, which did change the right of way uh, width from 20 feet to 32 feet. Um, it's a little confusing, but hopefully um, if the Board of Appeals would consider measurements being taken from the center to 32 foot versus the center to 20, this would change the 63 foot distance to be six foot farther or half of the 12 foot farther from the house. That proposed foyer would then be outside this, the uh, 63 feet distance from the center of the right of way and we would only be requesting a, a garage variance from you. Uh, you know, not, we all know not all roads are located in the center of the right of way. Um, as a retiree from public service, we'd like to thank the Board of Appeals for their public service, uh, as hard as it can be, and an enormous amount of time that it takes. I'm well aware of it, so thank you. Just one moment, there may be some questions. Um, uh, on the drawing that we were provided with, um, yes, it, it lays out uh, the location of uh, the existing structure and the proposed structure. Yes, um, sir. What's the distance from the back side of the garage, if that makes it where your vehicles will enter, the distance from there to the edge of the blacktop? 24 feet, uh, which we felt was ample room you know, to put uh, visitors come by or parking out front, the back end of the vehicle wouldn't be anywhere near, you know, extending out into the blacktop. Have a little bit of room in the front to walk um, in front of the vehicle to, you know, access the house. Okay. That was the only question I had, Steve. Is yes, sir. the proposed foyer area going to be a heated addition to the house? It would be, yes, sir. So you're expanding the house? Yes. Yes. Did you ever look or consider at attaching the garage directly to the home and not having a foyer? Yeah, that was looked at, yes. Um, it's just the difference of the elevation from the, the there's, there's five and a half, there's six feet of difference from the garage floor to the house. And yeah. Floor to floor? Yep, yep. It's, 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 it's a round peg square hole, but right now we're, we're making a round peg out, round peg out of the square peg. I mean, it, it, it it's um, that area of the, the foyer, it sounds, it's more just a transition for staircase. There's going to be a staircase coming in. I mean, to be up front, my, uh, all our stairs are straight because someday I'm probably going to have to <laughs> chair lift. So everything's straight and, um, you know, we're just going to try and enjoy the, the, the lake and the area as much as, as we can. Um, we did look at all possibilities, side load. Uh, we can't go to the east because the neighbor's uh, garage basement's so high up in the air. Um, it's, it's just long, skinny lots generally have to have long, skinny houses. <laughs> um, so it's, it's, it's a, we couldn't go any higher with the, with the foundation of the, the basement floor because we'd be on fill, which is you know, kind of taboo. So, Are those uh, foyer stairs external or internal? Well, we're hoping to have them internal uh, in the foyer area. So there'll be a roof over them. I'm sorry? There'll be a roof over them? Yes, sir. Yeah, it would be, a, it would be we're going to actually expand the living living area, the house, a little bit to be able to have uh, a heated, you know, go from a, 
probably an unheated garage. The costs right now are so high on everything. I don't know if we're going to be able to heat the garage. Probably not. We just got to cut some corners on. Uh, so we'll probably go from an unheated garage into a heated foyer um, area with, again, with stairs coming down so we can transition to the house. It's, it's, it's a bit of a different uh, elevation. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions of the applicant? <clears throat> Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else to speak on behalf of the application? <clears throat> Identify yourself, please. I'm Heather Harrington. I was hired by the Long Acres to um, design the stormwater management plan and also speak on their half in support of the variance. Um, I'm a civil engineer and designer and design stormwater management systems for projects like these, but also for roadways, as Gordon knows. Um, and we deal with drainage all the time. And in the case of the garage, elevation distance between the garage and the house being six feet, if it were uncovered and separate, um, water would all fall on this 24 by 12 foot area, and it would want to collect at the back of the house, which isn't good engineering design. Um, it can be dealt with. Um, but not easily. It's basically level across. It's coming down the slope and then you could put a uh, drain rock behind the foundation and um, pipe under drain and try to get it to flow out, but um, you're not gonna be completely successful in introducing water in that area. Um, could compromise the foundation. Um, it could leak water into the home. Um, you know, it's just, from my standpoint, it'd be much better designed to have the area covered, whether or not it's heated. If it's covered, you're not, in, you're, you're not introducing the water. Having it be heated, of course, it's, um, you're not gonna have the frost damage potential. So, um, and I can touch on the stormwater design. We only needed to uh, design a basin to um, treat runoff from the area of the house and addition in excess of 15%. Um, that's why we had to, that's why they had to hire us in the first place to have a stormwater plan uh, for the potential of putting on the foyer and the garage because the house as it is now doesn't exceed 15%. But they went ahead and um, constructed the basin and did everything that we required in our plan, including erosion control and the stormwater management. And um, we went back out and measured the capacity of their infiltration basin. And it is sufficient to treat all of the runout off from the whole house, plus the addition of the foyer and the garage. So, they, and, and they're treating it for a 10 year storm versus what would be required, which is a two year storm ordinarily. So, um, you know, if you got what we've been getting recently, a 500 year storm, you know, it, it, there is a potential that it could overflow. Um, it's unlikely, but it could. And with every stormwater system, there's that potential that it could overflow because you're not designing for a 100 year or a 500 year event you're designing for. In this case, we're designing for a 10 year event, but it's got, and it does exceed that capacity for the 10 year storm. So they did a good job designing it. Thank you. Any Anyone questions? have any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to speak on behalf of the application? Anyone to speak in opposition to the application? Ma'am. Linda Zilmer, 902 Holly Hill Lane, Birchwood, Wisconsin, uh, Edgewater property owner. Um, I do appreciate all the work that the Long Acres have put into this. Um, I was here for the 2019 hearing, um, heard from neighbors then and now. Um, my concerns are more process related. One thing I have not seen mentioned or considered in either hearing is that with the lot being 66 feet by roughly 178 feet, it is non-conforming and maybe possibly substandard to the current smallest requirement, minimum requirement of 100 feet 
by 200 feet. So basically you have an 11,740 square foot lot versus minimum standard of 20,000. Building a new like this with the first variance denied, um, I believe this is a self-imposed hardship despite the mitigation factors being taken. And I also consider the neighboring properties who could be similarly applying for things and having that level of impervious surface. Um, these are unsewered lots with private wells and septics. Uh, I guess I would struggle to approve to have, a, to, to a, a grant the variance for the additional build out space. And again, substandard or non-conforming, uh, the purpose of the zoning code is to eliminate non-conformities. Non and I know this board has also voted to not allow expansion of non-conformities. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else to speak in that position to the application? Okay, hearing none, discussion by the board. Jay, how is this really all Jay on the board? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Oh, How is this actually different than what was presented in 19? In, in 2019, the uh, the stormwater uh, basin had not been created, in, engineered. Um, was it not proposed in 19? That the runoff was one of the reasons for denial. Okay. Um, so they, they mitigated for that, um, but I do believe the same size for the garage in Hoyer um, is, is exactly as 2019. Uh, is that correct, sir? It's the same size. Um, yeah, I think you probably need to stop, step to the microphone. Sorry for Nikki. Um, at the time we had anticipated going to what we're asking for now, um, but at the time, probably our own ignorance, we had come in asking just for the garage. If we could have, if we get permission to build the garage, then we were, then we, then we would design it. So we didn't have Heather on board because we we're coming in for a garage. If we known it was going to be such a big deal for drainage back then, we would have been better prepared for drainage. Again, we, we, and it's probably ignorance. If we didn't get a variance for a garage, maybe. You know, I don't know what we would have done. I really don't know what we would have done. Um, so, and I don't really understand Linda saying it's a, a um, it's a it's a non-conforming lot. Um, it was planted in 1919. All those lots along there, pretty much 66 by 176. So, is it not grandfathered? I mean, if it was up to her. I think we'd have all non-buildable lots over there, and that's not that's not right. Um, you know, my grandparents picked what they picked. Uh, you know, I was, I was, I wasn't, I didn't have any input on it, but you know, we're just glad we're in Sawyer. So, with that said, um, I, I think going back to the question is, we were concentrating more on getting a garage for, approval for a garage and then designing a house after that, and that's why it kind of got complicated because um, we weren't prepared to defend drainage at the time. I did, I did. Actually, I did uh, plan on his detention basin the whole time. I just didn't have it designed by by Heather because, again, we thought we were coming in for a garage, not for drainage. It's more, yeah, because of the closeness to the road. If you would let us do that, then we would have tied everything together with that. But in my mind, and one of the gentlemen on the board back then had said, well, you know, who's your landscaper? And I was a little taken back. And he says, well, I don't want to prove this because, um, just you can, some guy that took three classes could hang a shingle out and call himself a landscape. Well, the whole time we planned on hiring Heather um, and we just hadn't got to that point. There's a cost to it. And so am I trying to make clear that we went in for a garage and we got pounded on drainage so and I was unprepared for drainage. The original of the 2019 application, the garage that you were proposing at that time is the same as the garage you're proposing this um, with or without the foyer yes but we only we only came in for the house um yeah. but we had heather design the roof drainage and everything for future expansion okay. you know phase one phase two if you will um i don't know if that helps my case or not but did it answer your question yeah, yeah okay thank did. you thank you very much yep yeah. miss zeller did you have another comment 
I'm not against development, but I'm a, I'm for development that is suitable for the size of the lot. And the reason I pointed out the substandard size lot is because the shoreland wetland zoning ordinance, I'm sorry, my, my phone is small. I think it's 5.4 says that on these smaller lots, you can build as long as you meet all setbacks. And so from building from a new, there could have been something designed because the garage was part of that 2019 that would have incorporated everything to meet the setbacks. So that's my concern is I'm not opposed to building on substandard lots. I would rather see it meet the zoning ordinance standards of meeting setbacks. And this, I believe, far exceeds it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, anybody have any other questions of the applicant or, the, um, or anyone in the audience? Okay, discussion by the board and decision by the board. Pat, did you have something you were going I, to put on? I think the only other thing to uh, consider is 4.26 does allow for a reduced town road setback for a detached accessory structure um, where a structure of a that size would fit. However, they're requesting the variance because of a runoff issue. So if they went with a detached, like, uh, like Heather explained, that would not make the uh, the retention basin work in a way and it potentially could cause damage and effects to the home foundation because of the water coming around that detached structure then if that's making any sense yeah, yeah, yeah. so if they didn't have the foyer then they and had a detached garage then they could have a reduced setback from correct the road. from so correct. the question is which is more harmful or beneficial here is take care of the water runoff or you know have the garage closer to the roof did it, um everybody get an opportunity to go out and look at this mm -hmm. property <laughs> did you go past it there's a pickup hanging out in the hot out uh, over the blacktop actually um uh in this comment that, that we had heard previously about people parking on the road because they can't get off of the road. Um, there would be some bottlenecks out there if, um, with, if everybody parked on the road, um, which would be perfectly allowable and legal. Um, uh. what, one of my concerns and thoughts is before the home was built, the home could have be of a different size and had the garage closer to the home that would have been shorter and it would have been there for further from the road right away. So this was a created situation in that respect. Yeah, I, I don't know that I, I'm aware or ever heard of the location of the original cabin before it was removed, um, if that's closer than the existing cabin is or, or further back. How far is the cabin from the, from the water right now? Or home, excuse me, home. We might have that information. I am 49 feet. Yeah. 49? Yeah. It was, it was constructed at an average setback. Oh, okay. Correct. It was a previous cabin location. Oh, okay. So, well, with, the, with that deck addition, it, it is it it's still back up. Yeah, it's still lot. moved back a little bit. Yeah. But with a 40 foot house, they could have the garage and go forward. Okay. Any additional comments? You know, to me, they've done a, a lot better job with the runoff than they would have had to if it would have been 100 by 200 foot lot. Right. And they could have just kind of had it and done what they wanted. So. I feel good about that. It's not going to get into the lake. Assuming Heather knows what she's talking about. I have a question for the engineer. It's possible. You need to any comments to the board must be made to the microphone. Your retention ponds 
and the impervious surface of the proposed foyer, the garage that's proposed, the existing new house. Does that come into play if he decides he wants to pave the driveway? Um, it, what's required to be treated would still be uh, treated. What's required to be treated is what exceeds 15% of the lot size. And we're treating the entire impervious surfaces as they are now. Now, um, if they pave, that would add impervious surface. It would also, the runoff from a paved drive would be directed down toward the basin as well. Would that uh, cause problems in your mind, possibly? I don't think so, because of the over design of the basin. As it stands. Thank you. I'm sorry, I have one more question, Heather. Sure, Father. Yes. In a system like this, I'm certainly not real familiar with them. Is there a maintenance over time? Yes, and it's provided for. It had a long-term maintenance agreement it had to be provided to the county zoning. And um, the basin has to be maintained by um, cleaning out debris. All of the drainage to the basin has to be maintained. And this is uh, standard for any, um, if we design something for say a construction site permit for the DNR, same thing. We have to, the owner has to provide a maintenance agreement and the town is able to come in and maintain the, the uh, stormwater yeah, the right to devices. Um, if it is found, if they are found to be um, not working properly, and the owner is not maintaining them by this agreement, the town has the right to come in and, and do the maintenance at the owner's expense. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Any further questions or comments? I thought the drainage program that was done there was probably one of the better ones I've seen. Yeah. And for such a narrow lot, it's a, it'd be a hard place to build anything in the steepness of it. So, yeah, I, I thought it was. I, I don't see a problem with it other than being too small a lot, but that is what it is. I thought that was maybe it's done all the time, but pretty innovative to use the underside of that deck um, mm -hmm. uh, as a catch it, catch piece and then. Does someone care to make a motion to either approve or deny the uh, application as submitted or to make alterations? I'll make a motion that we approve it as designed and submitted. Okay. Is there a second to the motion? Motion made by Gordon, second by D to approve the design as submitted. Is it to approve the design as submitted or to approve the variance as submitted? Uh, variance. variance. To approve the variance as submitted. Um, any discussion on the motion? All those in favor of the motion saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Was that five zero? Okay, motion is passed by a voice vote of five to zero. Um, findings of fact. First for me. <laughs> <laughs> Fire away. Uh, impacts of construction uh, being minimized by mitigation. Uh, circumstances are really beyond the control of the applicant and unique property and not of the applicant. And the building area is very narrow and the steep slopes are a problem. Okay. Thank you, folks. Um, you can stop by the office and get the necessary permits. Thank you.
Our second variance tonight, a public hearing in the town of Hayward, variance 22-003, owners, ACR CMK Trust, park government lot two and lots one and two, CSM six uh, backslash 76, number 1153, section 22, town 40 north, range 08 west, parcel 010-840-22-5203, total acres, zone forestry one, F1. Application is for the construction of a 30 foot by 40 foot pole building with a 12 foot by 60 foot lean to greenhouse. Variance requested as application for second building subject to Sawyer County Zoning Ordinance Section 4.26, Parent 2. This will be the second accessory structure across the town road from where the principal dwelling is located. Uh, as staff report states, the applicant is AC, ACRCMK Trust, 1721 38th Street, Somerset, Wisconsin. Agent is Arthur Rutschier and Carol Keyes. Um, Property location as previously read into record. Again, the summary of the request is the applicants are requesting a variance for the construction of a 30 foot by 60 foot accessory structure with an attached 60 foot by 12 foot lean to greenhouse. The proposed structure would meet all setbacks and would be the second accessory structure on the adjacent parcel divided by the public roadway as section 4.26 parent two. The construction of a single accessory structure on adjacent parcel divided by a public roadway that does not contain the principal structure may be allowed under a subsection of a conditional use permit provided that the accessory structure cannot be constructed on part of the parcel containing the principal structure due to the inability to meet setbacks and lakefront parcels may be allowed from the exception of 4.26 parent 2 parent A in the town and zoning committee determining in their finding the fact that the placement of accessory structures on adjacent parcel divided by a public roadway that does not contain the principal structure lessens the impact of the impervious surface runoff to the lake and the proposed adjacent parcel is within 66 feet of the parcel, parcel containing the principal structure and the proposed adjacent parcel meets the minimum square footage requirement per the current zone district standards and the proposed accessory structure meets um, uh, all other zoning ordinance requirements and setbacks. A conditional use permit may be approved by the zoning committee in any zone district, provided that the town has approved the conditional use for the placement of the accessory structure on both parcels that are legally joined together with a deed restriction so that they may not be sold separate unless approved by the town and zoning committee. Uh, separate parcels. Uh, this process should also be done by conditional use in a platted subdivision of maximum size of 1200 square feet, max height of 18. This proposed request meets all these requirements except the second accessory structure now being requested. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, project history. Again, the applicant was approved for a conditional use permit, a CUP in 2017 for a 30 foot by 40 foot accessory structure and completed the project. This is now the second request for an accessory structure across a, a public roadway from where the principal structure is located. This ordinance revision for accessory structures across the town road was amended in 2017 and this applicant was one of the first to apply for the CUP under the new ordinance standards. There would be a small amount of buildable area on the side of the lot where the principal dwelling is located, but this area would put the proposed accessory structure uh, much closer to the water and a major grading permit, uh, major grading project would be required in that area. <clears throat> See the attached map. This variance request is almost a hybrid of a use and an area variance. The ability to place two accessory structures across a town road is not specifically allowed within the zoning ordinance. The ability to Place one is allowed by the CUP, but the second building in that area across the road from where the primary dwelling would be located would not be allowed by variance. With that being said, though, they again are not needing any specific relief from any setback requirements, and more particularly, it's for the use of the second accessory structure across the town road. Um, the 
town approved this variance application that it would not be a self-created hardship and it would not be detrimental to the ecology, wildlife, wetlands, shrines. Um, motion carried, variance approved. Five opinion letters were sent to returned. The Lakota Ray tribal government has no objections. Neither Kent, Kemp. I have no objections to this, Kimball uh, Foster. And that is all. Okay. Um, any questions of the zoning office before we ask for testimony? Okay, is there someone to, here to speak on behalf of the trust or the agent? You need to state your name, please. Carol Keys. And um, I guess we're, we're looking at doing this so that we can, I'd like to, we've already started with the land improvements and working at putting in some fruit trees and to regenerate. We had it um, logged in last year, the 10 acres. Loggers didn't want to go on the other side. It was too steep. And that's <clears throat> why we chose not to uh, put a building there. What we'd like is to put a building up there and the, the accessory structure to store a personal property to work the land the in order to get the orchard and the vegetables and the, uh, a butterfly garden and the greenhouse then in order to grow the you know the vegetables get them started and gutters in order to capture the rainwater in order to irrigate the land um, like they said, it wasn't self-imposed. It was just, you know, it makes sense for us to utilize that property, that 10 acres, rather than to just leave it sit and to try and make things better. Um, everything is, you know, in here. You know, without it, we, we can't build the greenhouse. We just don't have any other place to put it that would work. Um, it just makes sense to build that additional structure there. The other structure is used as a garage and a little workshop. Is that what the second floor is on that garage workshop? No, that's um, family room, activity room. We have seven kids and 14 grandchildren. So when, when we have a majority of them up there, that's what we use it for is there's an air hockey table there and they go over there and play. Or if, if the adults want to talk, and the kids send the kids over, or whatever. So. Any other questions? I guess I don't know what more information. Oh, also that it is on an ATV trail. Um, I guess if I was thinking, you know, even when we have the grandkids there, in order to cross over to the garage, we're very careful about that. And then thinking about the slow moving vehicles coming out of, you know, if we had something there, there's also a hill right at, um, and we're at the base of it. In fact, when I was coming over here today, there were four ATVs, I was meeting them, and three of them got over, but the one was in the middle of the road and I had to pull over so that they could come through. So, and I know the speed limit there is 35, but that's not always allowed. So Indian Lake Road is an ATV trail? Yes, okay. partial, just about halfway down, past our place. And, Um, I suppose it doesn't matter because we <clears throat> we deal with footprint rather than use, but um, 60 feet is pretty good size structure. Um, I could make it smaller, but it was just, you know, when we started talking about it, somebody said, well, you know, well, they suggested 40 by 80 and you know, we looked at a 30 by 60 and thought that would be plenty. We have a skid steer a um, tractor with a grabber and a bucket and a rototiller and a um, brush cutter. So that equipment to be stored in there, as well as storing a UTV that we use, that I use as a workhorse for, you know, I've got a 
um, winch on the front of it and I use that quite frequently for pulling things because I'm just not strong enough by myself. So we do have never big enough. Yeah. What's that? I said like garages they fill up. <laughs> that's like that's what somebody enough. said. Because yeah. I said I was going to I was thinking, you know, with the 30 by 40 with the 12 foot lean to and so he says, yeah, it's never going to be big enough. But we're only going to use it for personal use, not for any commercial storage or anything like that. It's a 12 foot, at least the one that I was looking at or planning on. Okay. This orchard is not to be a commercial operation. No. No, I just um my son-in-law and daughter have the they are doing that. They live up in Canada, it's a long story. And so then I've got to thinking, yeah, that would be, you know, nice have my own orchard, you know, apples and fruit trees, and then start growing. Well, I've already started growing the oak and pine trees for replanting up there. I've got those down in the front yard. I hope the deer don't eat the ears like the dewy pine. The the apples. <laughs> I've got I've got well I've, I've already got my fence purchased. Okay, so and I plan planning on putting um crimson clover and somebody said, well that's gonna bring the deer, but if I have the fence up, the crimson clover in order to put the nutrients into the soil before we plant the trees. And I even took a job at winter greenhouse so I could learn more about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any other questions of the applicant? Okay. Thank you. We may call on you again. Right, um, thank you. Okay. Anyone else to speak on behalf of the application? On behalf of the application? Okay. Step right up. Linda Zilmer, 902 Holly Hill Lane, Bertrand, Wisconsin, Edgewater property owner. Um, I'm about the process. I'm not against everything. Now I'm going to give an explanation. <laughs> This is forestry one zone district. She's going to plant an orchard. She's proposing a greenhouse. That's forestry. That's a principal use that's allowed in forestry one. So what I would, I mean, it's all been noticed and has gone through the process, but I think the better way that this could have been approved is this is a principal structure related to forestry that would not require a use variance or this, what I'm concerned with the way this is going forward is a second accessory structure. You're familiar that there are many of these across the road accessory structures out there. And if this one passes, then what's to say there won't be a lot more. And I'm not only concerned about those is that this month's zoning committee meeting, there's amendment going forward, a recommendation for the county board to amend the zoning ordinance to allow small storage structures on vacant land anywhere all over the county. So what's to say I want to leave my ATVs there as well as my lawnmower and camping equipment. I want a variance for a second small structure or one of the people that were came in, in at the public and spoke in favor of that amendment was, well, what about a deck? Because the deck is not in the ordinance. So I, th I think probably a resolution needs to be done at the zoning ordinance level to address second accessory structures across town roads and then the can of worms that'll get opened up if this just the storage structure goes forward. But right now I don't see why this can't be approved as a principal structure in a forestry one zone district that's related to her greenhouse and orchard work. Thank you. Um, one question, um, just curiosity. Um, what was the size of the small structure? Was it 144 square feet? 144 square feet. 12 by 12? Whatever. Yeah. And you know that existing people are going to want more. Existing uh, small. <laughs> yeah. It's a small structure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Anyone else to speak on behalf of their application? Anyone to speak in opposition to the application? Hearing none discussion by the board. Um, so a conditional use permit was granted for the first building? That's correct, in 2017. And we're hearing this case because it's a second rather than a solo. It is a, a second accessory structure across the town road. So why does that not? 
a, a, another conditional use permit rather than a variance because it, it's a variance to the it, it's a it's a variance to allow the second accessory structure so it's a variance to the ordinance not a variance to the conditional use permit correct it's a variance to the ordinance okay that the ordinance would only allow for a single accessory structure um and and as linda pointed out it, it would be an administrative decision um whether this this is truly a, a forestry use and would it be a, a principal structure at that time my concern with that would then be that would require a subdivision of this property because that if we we're considering that new 30 by 60 accessory structure with the greenhouse as a principal use and you have two principal uses or principal structures on one parcel property and the only way to to handle that would be a subdivision the lake parcel and then principal structure on the back and then you're opening up the doorway to keyholing and light in back lot lake access so there, there's a can of worms going that way as well okay i like the deed restriction idea uh what would be the deed restriction well i mean if you you gotta sell them all together yourself right you you could you could do a, a deed restriction if you did do the subdivision um and you could do a deed restriction across the town road, correct? Where you'd have to sell them. That would that would take away the the keyhole aspect. Well, what about the size of the proposed structure being over the twelve hundred foot maximum? It would be a principal. Yeah, but I mean, as it sits right now. That that doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. No, the the twelve hundred square feet that would that would only that applies to the initial one, right? That would apply to the initial one, correct? Not, not subsequent ones. Correct. Mr. Chairman, uh, Ms. Zilmer has um, yes, yes, sir. Thank you for allowing me to ask a question, and I don't have the ordinance language in front of me, but I understand a lot of these accessory structures we um, are created with regard to a primary or principal dwelling, primary dwe principal dwelling. So the accessory is related to the residential use and with it being seven acres, could this possibly be partitioned off from the other parcel that's attached, the accessory structure to the home and then allow a principal forestry structure on a different lot? Just roughly calculating on GIS, they wouldn't have the acreage requirement on forestry one zone district at that time, which is five acres. Right. And so, I'm only coming up roughly with 4.26. Okay. So the accessory... so that, that would not be a viable option to subdivide and keeping it forestry and then having a principal structure. So it's kind of a moot point. Dwelling is in forestry or in residential? The dwelling is in yeah, forestry. Would you, would you run that by again? Why would it not be possible? What's the total acreage here for the tax roll? It's 13 point eight on the agenda. It says 30 Olivia. Yeah, according to this, yeah, recorded acres, 13. three and a half the residential and 10.2 productive forest. Yeah. Oh, I, I was looking at hectares. <laughs> I was looking at hectares. Oh, wow. and not hectares. Acres. Sure. Hectares. Yeah. On my calculation. Yeah. yeah. So, there you go. <laughs> I apologize. So um, it's a 12 by 60. So that, that yeah, would be that, that's not good. 10 acres on, on that side of the road. If you did by subdivision. Um, so that would be a viable option mm -hmm. on that way. Just for, for thought, yeah, what if what if they 
right now where the new building is proposed. Can they do that with the F1 zoning because of the, that could be the principle? The way that is, is shown right there, they, they could do a, a subdivision as long as, as long as this width dimension is 300 feet. Okay. And your parcel is five acres, which sure seems like it would be. Mm -hmm. It does. That approximate width is 526 feet. So total. Uh, so Six. total. So they would not be able to subdivide that way because they wouldn't have 300 feet in width for both new parcels. Okay. Okay. The acreage is there, but not the width. The acreage is there, but not the width. Correct. So again, we're back to the subdivision is not a viable option. So this is less than 600 feet. Measuring parcel line, and I'm looking at not meters this time. Okay. Or anything. Uh, 524, yeah, 526 wide. Oh, it's not, I guess. Yeah. It's 524. Do you understand what we're discussing right now? Um, if, if splitting the property in half was doable, then where you're proposing a new structure could remain in Forest Street and you wouldn't need uh, a variance. But it doesn't look like you're wide enough. I'll just it. So, yeah. I guess for the, were lots one and two, then I don't understand that it's on the back of the this one from way back when on the back of this page, the assessment one. Do you have that one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that one divided, but I don't know why or what for. I never did understand that one. I think somebody at one time was going to sell off a portion of it to family, the Swansons, I think. And then that part got divided. Jim, what was your comment earlier about um, a deed restriction? Well, I, I think what you're seeing is you're seeing a lot of these across the road from places and I understand why. Well, this is a forest for use. It, it could be not you, but somebody else could put boats in it or whatever it could do. So I don't know if I'm real comfortable just calling this a forest for use forever and a day. Um, that being said, if, if they're willing to do, it's, it's all one parcel now, correct? And no matter what happens down the road, if they would live with it and they'd have a very simple deed restriction that if you sold the, ever sold the property, you couldn't parcel it up. When the time comes, you'll sell all your, all you got, everything you got and leave. And then that would kind of take away the concern of the splitting and development for me because I couldn't do it. In the future. And if, if, if your goal is really to do what you want to do here, that shouldn't be a problem for you. What about limiting to um, limiting it, limit, limiting it to two? So three so years now we for another. Three years from now we don't see another thirty by sixty. Well, we, we could the, certainly, yeah, we could certainly put that in there too, which would make some sense. Between the two of them, I think we'd be pretty well protected trying what we're trying to do, and so I think it would accommodate what she needs to do if if what she's trying to do is really what she's trying to do, and I believe it is. What is the second fire number that shows up on maps? Is is that a error? Or? Must be an error. That could be a GIS mm -hmm. glitch. That's what I'm guessing. I was, I was going to say, as far as being serious about this, I have a greenhouse sitting on my deck, <laughs> so I've already got that started. And like I said, I've got the tree started, and my raised bed, in and my vegetables.
I, I agree, Dan. Um, and you know, if you look at that map up there, um, and we always look at are we affecting the rights of others? And it's a whole bunch of publicly owned land around there. There's really nobody really that we're going to affect a whole lot if she, if she does that, right? If it's just the one person. Correct, exactly. Yeah, yeah, really nobody. And, and the, the tribe and the, and they didn't even disagree. Pat, if something came of this that was written in, in this decision, that it may be retained as one large parcel in that one zone, does that prevent them from coming to the board in five years and applying for a zoning change? Probably not. So if I'm understanding the question correctly, if you, part of your motion was that it needs to remain the 13 acres. Contiguous piece. Contiguous with, with piece. Of two old buildings, F1 zoning, does that prevent five years down the road, things change in their world and now they wanna go for a- Rezone and, a rezone and along put five lots up. in there. They yeah. have to go for a zoning change. Yep, yep. Because it lots wouldn't be big enough no, no, in that no. one, right? But so I, I, decision stop that. I, I don't stop think that. it would prevent them from trying. from trying to rezone. However, that would be addressed in the staff report that it was a motion made however many years prior by that Board of Appeals that it was to be contiguous property. With a maximum of two old buildings. Correct. Across the road. I don't know if there's one of the old buildings on the lake side. Because it's a little shed, they might be able to get something there. They, they it, if they wanted to put in garden sheds or, you know, boathouse yeah. or anything. I guess if they can meet the setbacks. If they can meet the setbacks on the, on the lakeshore the parcel. Yeah, that's fine. That's not the reason. I'm just abbreviating contiguous because I don't know how to spell it. <laughs> I have a question on the uh, application here. It says that the variance requested is an additional 30 by 60 structure on the west side of the road. On the agenda, it says 30 by 40. The agenda that was on the table here. It says it's for the construction of a 30 by 40 pole building with a 12 by 60 lean to. Yeah, um, he can actually see where it was written over on, on the application. Well, I was just wondering on the application, but does it make any kind of difference as to what was on the application? What is on the agenda? Yeah, it's on the, the staff report too. As 30, as 40 or 60? As it's 60. Yeah, 30 by 60 and then 60 by 12 lean to. That's what it's got. So this is the actual request. Um, well, I'm the, just wondering if it made a difference on the actual request yeah, as to what was on yeah. the agenda. Sometimes things like can get a little mm -hmm. hairy. Yep. With that. Good, good catch. Jim, are you ready to make a motion of any sort? 
Um, not calling y'all or anything. <laughs> no, no, I. I'd say I make the motion. We accept it as it's written on the report um, to be to be in a 13 acres of if it's a 30 by 40 or 30 by 60. That's plenty enough land. Um, I, I would like to see and I'm not exactly sure how we do it with the deed restriction or with something so or something makes notes so like Steve talked about they don't come back in two years and say we want to apply for a zone to R1 and make 20 you know 20,000 square foot lots out of the whole thing. I think we can make those motions in language that we understand and then let um, the people that write them up. Um, okay, well, that's what I'm okay. Is, is that, the is that a fair way to assess it? Or <laughs> it, it can can we do business like that? Take that over one more time, Jim. <laughs> so, my, so my understanding yeah. is in, in your motion, as long as your motion includes you know, recommendation from the Board of Appeals, lots should not be subdivided in the future rezoned and subdivided um, and you know shall remain contiguous parcel something like that then we can okay then we can add that to if a staff report was ever written for a rezone that can come out of that that variance language that recommendation from the board of appeals and if we're going to make that type of restriction it, we're not I mean, we I don't want to miss a step right um but I think we want to include in there that this would be a maximum of two old buildings across the road from the primary mm -hmm. dwelling, not to see and, and, the, and the parcel that had it in its current form can only be sold in its current form. I would agree. Uh, of the, I understand what that means. I think the first oh, maybe it's already on there. To read the motion back. The way it's supposed well, to be written. Is read the motion back? Yeah, yes. This is what I have so far. Um, they're going to accept the application as 30 by 40 or 30 by 60 accessory building, 60. not subdividing lot, must stay contiguous, maximum of two outbuildings across the road. And then you said something that I couldn't hear the last few words. I was going to ask what, what was said after that. Me? You guys were talking to each other. Yeah. I don't know. Do we want to put that in there, Pat? Or? Well, that's that's the motion right now. Um, this is the motion that I have written down right now. Just, just. I would, I would talking. feel real good about that. Then we're really protecting what we want it to do. Pat, were you able to find anything there? I'm. But was there one other small thing after that you guys were talking? I don't believe there no, was. No, no, that was it. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's why if we have a deed, you know, we could put in there some now, and it doesn't get put in the report twenty years from now or whenever they go. Or if we had a deed restriction, it gets recorded on the deed, and anybody that searches it to try to buy it's going to find it. So you, currently, there there's a deed restriction that lots one and two shall not be separated. Oh, um, okay. But that deed restriction would not you know, prevent them from doing a rezone potentially. Well, that's why maybe we yep. need to. But can we, the rezone is a whole different. Um, it is. That's a whole it other is. Yeah. 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 It's a whole other can we can't. And this information, I would assume, would come, would come into that. That is correct. That discussion. Yes. I think, we got I think you got it covered, Jim. Well, yeah. So that's your motion. That's my motion. I will second the motion as presented. Okay. But for the record, would you read it one more time before I call for a motion? Sure. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Accept the application 30 by 40 or 30 by 60 accessory building, not subdividing lot, must stay contiguous, 
maximum of two outbuildings across the road, only as a deed restriction. Lots one and two cannot be subdivided. Okay, there's been a motion and a second. Um, any discussion on the motion? Protecting the, the resource. It's adequate space and it's in an F1 zone that to use that's compatible. Yeah. Okay, all those in favor of the motion as we then saying aye. 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 I'll post same sign, finding the fact of the statements uh, just made by Mr. Kelsey, unless you have additional findings of that. Yeah, great. Yeah. A little bit louder. I have F1 zone. Not damaging to the rights of others. Compatible use with that one zone. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. New business. One piece of new business I have here, the um, signature form from the DNR. This was from the previous new business about the uh, not wanting to have a written opinion from the DNR as far as Board of Appeals within the Shoreland Zoning District. So there's a copy for each of us? There's a copy for each. Are we to vote on this this evening or? Um... No, there's not a copy for each. Oh, oh yes, oh. there is. Oh. There should yes. be one that stays with that one. Oh, one that stays. Yeah, okay. Please. Okay. Discussion process. Oh, yeah. Well, this is, this is a discussion action. I want to sign yeah. something. Yeah. Can, I, can I have that original copy just so I can read it quickly? Yeah. yeah. One more question. Yes, Linda. Last month's meeting, um, because it wasn't available for you to vote on, but I thought the discussion was is that you did want to get written opinions from the DNR, and maybe I just heard wrong that this is to. I, I think I read it wrong. Okay. Yes. No, it is but it is to receive an opinion from the Department of Natural Resources on cases pertaining in the Toronto Wetland. So, may not appeal the decision, but upon request, issue an opinion. Um, I don't know how long I've been on the board, but um, initially we would get a reply from them uh, every time yeah. there was a shoreline involved. Um, and then more recently, those have been less frequent, um, if, if at all. Um, I always like having a hard copy of their their position uh, available so to me um, allowing them or requesting them to give us a written opinion it is uh, another arrow on our quiver um, uh, another plank on our deck or whatever you want to call it um, a positive there's I don't see anything negative of getting a written opinion from the department it's informational yeah so if I'm interpreting tonight's request correctly, um, we're being asked by the DNR to officially sign a document requesting that they give us a written opinion. 
um, when asked. Is that a fair assessment? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's correct. Sounds good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now, and it, it doesn't matter whether the sitting board tonight, the regular members or, or right. alternates. I'll, I'll fix the name changes if there need be. Yeah, because. Well, Laura is the only one that is not right. present. So. Okay, while well, that's um, circulating, um, I have two things. Um, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be here for the September hearing, if there is one. Okay. Um, I may be gone, but um, when the, my September dates are confirmed, I can let the office know. So, um, and then the other thing, <clears throat> I attended a zoning committee meeting. I don't even remember when it was. Um, not the one recently, the one prior to that. Um, regarding this, um, for lack of better definition, the Kurzweil. Um, uh, appeal. Um, and my reason for attending that was um, I thought there's a lot of confusion and wiggle room between multiple dwellings on small parcels. And but um, what stuck, stuck, stuck out to me was um, how differently that committee does their business versus the way we do it. Um, you know, they actually conduct a public hearing and then then they close the public hearing and then they have their discussion and then they make their decision and we don't do it that way um at one time i think legal counsel su suggested that we do it that way um so i guess my question is do we want to change the way we conduct our meetings um the reason i was reluctant to um do it the way the zoning committee does it is because it seems like we always have another question of, of, the, of the applicant or someone from the audience and and the way they do it then they have to stop close close the meeting reopen public hearing by motion hear hear the statement make a motion to close the public hearing um, <coughs> to me their, their way of doing it is time consuming and cumbersome but maybe it's more legal and um, I don't know that we've ever been challenged uh, for running a horseshit meeting, but uh, 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 but um, oh, well, this is recorded too, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, I, I, how how uh, how do you want to do business, folks? I guess um, we can go back to the strict Roberts rule of order, letter of the law, or or um, do it a little looser. What you could do is go online and watch part of an audio of the zoning committee how it's run. Okay, do you want to send that to all of us? Uh, you can go right online to our website. No, I can't. <laughs> I can send you the link. You better send it, Kathy. I will send the link. <laughs> Well, just, just for the record, I think the way we do things here, we deal with specific cases, not an overall zoning policy issue. <coughs> and I think it's more direct the way we're doing it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I think we make a lot of the right decisions. Maybe we don't do it in the most legal or proficient manner, but. Um, well, uh, it's a more direct way, though. Pardon? You're handling one situation at a time and not having to go back and forth. Well, time. if you have more questions, you ask and they come back up to the mic. Uh, and I, I like doing business that way. Um, at that particular zoning meeting that I attended, I wish I could have gotten back up and, and made another statement, but they had closed the public input session. So then I didn't want to 
you know, I guess to make yourself feel better, that would be a question for legal counsel. Can, are we still okay doing it the way we're doing? This is a modus operandi. We feel is more efficient for gathering information, but are we still within our legalities of complying with the rules? And if we are, sounds like we continue to like to do this. Uh, a few months ago, we were asked if we wanted legal counsel present at every one of our meetings, and we decided we didn't. I mean, I think we've we've made good decisions and in informational based decisions uh, ever, ever since then. I don't know if Robert's rule and order got tripped over a couple of times, but um, all right. I just wanted to throw that out there, but please send us that link. Sure. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. You are welcome. Okay, anything else that comes before the board? Is this a new, um, we got one coming up in one, July? Yeah, okay. one in July. Okay, hearing no further discussion, is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. Gordon. Second. Steve, all in favor, signify saying aye. Aye. We are adjourned. <laughs>